All right, this is a quick demo of um, a color sensor that SparkFun's been carrying for a little while now. Um, it's the Avago ADJD S371Q999. Um, and you know, that's a bit of a mouthful, but um, it's actually a pretty convenient little sensor. Um, this is a breakout board from SparkFun. It actually has, um, the module itself has a small white LED. <clears throat> Pardon my voice, I'm still getting over a cold. Um, it has a little surface mount white LED. Um, and then the uh, integrated sensor package, which has red, green, blue, and clear um, sensor chips. And um, built-in 10-bit um, A to D converter with a convenient I2C interface. Um, so I just have this connected to a little uh, microcontroller board, um, which is um, sampling the uh, light readings. Um, and I'm sampling once with the LED on and once with the LED off um, to give a differential reading. So as you'll see, um, the ambient light level doesn't really affect the reading when you're doing differential sampling like this. Um, but then I have it sending those readings to my PC over a serial port. Um, I've done a little bit of calibration um, for white point um, so that it gives you kind of meaningful colors because on my sensor um, the green channel was more sensitive than the others. Um, and then it gives you in this window a uh, representation of what the sensor thinks the color is like. And since I um, am planning on using the sensor to um, automatically sort these perlu beads, um, I thought I'd use those as an example of um, what this can measure this, the uh, color of. So, something boring to start out. Here's a white perlu bead. As you can see, you can see that it's white. Um, as it gets closer, you'll notice the white gains intensity because the amount of reflected light um, increases. When it measures the difference between the um, color with the light on versus the light off, you're measuring the reflectance, um, the reflected color of the object. So that was white. Um, Here's something a little more interesting. Here's blue. Particular shade of blue. And you'll notice um, it changes in brightness a little bit. I have it um, set so that if the color is about to saturate, if any component's going to go above 255, it just scales it down so that you don't distort the color by exceeding my monitor's dynamic range. Um, and you'll notice that I can turn on my desk lamp here and even pass a shadow over the sensor. And it might be a little more noticeable if I back it away from the sensor a little bit, but I can change the ambient light. And aside from a little bit of fluctuation um, due to changes that occur between the light and the dark sampling, as long as the ambient light's changing slowly, um, it actually uh, manages to compensate for that pretty well. Here's blue, here's some orange, maybe some red. I don't know how these colors are going to come out on the camera, but on the screen here they actually look pretty accurate. Some green. Um, and yeah, I'll find out for sure once I get the rest of this project built and um, mount this color sensor on my little automated um, perlu bead hopper and sorting assembly. Um, I'll get to see how well it can actually uh, tell the dif difference between these colors. I was planning on just letting it automatically sort through my, my entire bucket of perlu beads and just do a scatter plot so that I can see, you know, for every different manufactured bead color how much actual variation I get in the sensor readings and hopefully it'll be obvious then how I can kind of cluster the readings so that I can, you know, have a definite number of perler bead colors. Another thing you'll notice, um, I don't know how easy it is, it is to see because this camera doesn't focus up close, but some of these beads are translucent, um, and especially problematic actually are the clear beads. 
and this, you know, because it's just measuring reflected light, it can't tell um, that maybe some of that is transmitted. So, for example, the clear bead here just looks white. It's a little bit bluish white, but I don't know how much of a difference uh, how much of a difference there's actually going to be between the clear colors and the opaque colors. So, if that ends up being a problem, I might have to mount another LED on the opposite side of the bead. And then just like right now I'm using the LED to measure the reflected light, I could alternate between those two LEDs to measure reflected and transmitted light. Alright, well that's all. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of a nifty little color sensor.